Hello Peter, thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. So as I understand it, there seems to be a little bit of conflict in the Schiff household these days. Your son is a big advocate of cryptocurrency, yourself not so much so. Seems there's a little bit of conflict going on in the Schiff household, so please enlighten us. Tell us a little bit about what's going on with your son's position in the cryptocurrency space. Well, first of all, I have to remember my son is 18 years old, so he's not, you know, he, he's never actually had a job and he's a freshman in college. So he's not like this wizard, uh, you know, you should not follow his investment advice. But, you know, I think it's very funny how many people on the Internet, you know, are so happy that he's all in. They're congratulating him for basically having no diversification whatsoever and for putting 100 percent of his basically his personal net worth into a highly speculative, volatile crypt digital asset. And they think this is a great decision. Like they think I should follow his advice. I should learn from my from my 18 year old son, despite the fact that he is obviously making a lot of mistakes. In fact, people should know better. I mean, even the people who believe in Bitcoin, right, would not say that you should have everything you have in it. I mean, what if it doesn't work out? I mean, what is so I mean, so He's just thrown caution to the wind. And I don't think that's something that people should want to emulate and say, yeah, that's the greatest investment strategy to put all your eggs in the same basket and then hope it doesn't break. Right. Or whatever. So I, 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 I it's interesting that so many people condone his concentration. It's interesting. I, I wonder why doesn't he invest in better coins such as. Um, Hex, for example, I hear Hex is a, is a fantastic investment for young people these days. Well, you know, he doesn't have my years and instances and my, my wisdom. I think he's younger and he's more susceptible uh, to all of the hype and the mania that surrounds Bitcoin. Uh, and he's, you know, he's a real libertarian, anarcho-capitalist. And this is also, you know, part of that whole world. And he's kind of immersed in it now. And it's just kind of something that's, you know, consuming for him. And uh, and he's bought into it. You know, he's like he drunk the Kool-Aid. I, I didn't drink. My son could be absolutely positive that he's right. And, you know, that's typically, you know, you have the younger generation. They think that they've you know, they, they're doing everything the first time. You know, their parents, their grandparents, you know, they're old, they're dinosaurs. They don't get it. Uh, uh, but, you know, I've been exactly where my son is now and my son will be where I am now in the future where he may have a son who's just as cocky as he is and think he and his generation have reinvented the wheel and they know everything, right? So the, 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 these are patterns that, that repeat. And, and so look, you know, I'm not saying that there isn't a compelling, sexy story right. that is, you know, causing people to, to believe in Bitcoin. I just think it's all wrong. I think at the end of the day, when you peel the onion and you get to what's really there, there's nothing there. And all of the justifications that people want to, you know, hang their hats on to validate their their thesis of how Bitcoin is digital gold and it's going to replace gold as a store of value or maybe a medium of exchange or both or whatever. Uh, I, I just don't see it. I see what I when I actually, you know, look look the whole thing. To me, it's just nonsense. And yes, you know. I understand that if enough people don't think that, you know, there is a theoretical scarcity to the Bitcoin. There's 21 million Bitcoin. There's 2.1 quadrillion Satoshis. Uh, but if you want to own a full Bitcoin, there's only 21 of them, 21 million of them there. Now, you know, that could be a big number if nobody wants them. But right. if a lot of people want them, then maybe the number is not so big. But as long as people want to buy them and the people who own them don't want to sell them because they're convinced they're the moon, the price could go up. Uh, but that's the same dynamic with any pyramid or Ponzi scheme or bubble. But I think at some point the psychology is going to turn and a lot of people who said they would never sell their Bitcoin, they're going to want to sell some. And what about all these um, celebrities now going all in on scooter coin? How do you feel about that? How's, how's the conversation evolved across the dinner table with your son now? He must be pretty pumped. Well, first of all, you know, that's the hallmark of any bubble, any speculative mania, that at some point, some of the people who were thinking right. rationally and 
were negative capitulate and, and join the party. They just can't resist because it's gone up so much that you have this capitulation uh, where some of the naysayers, you know, join the party. Now, most of the people who were negative on Bitcoin are still negative. I mean, you have a small group of profile people who have recently become converts. But also, when you look at a lot of these people, they've also recently become attached to crypto related businesses. So now they've got a vested interest in the success of Bitcoin. And so I would question their objectivity when all of a sudden they've got they're getting paid and they're involved in ventures that directly benefit from people getting into crypto. And now all of a sudden they like crypto. I mean, back a few years ago when they had no interest and no investments in crypto, they thought it was worthless and Bitcoin had less uh, value than a banana. But now all of a sudden way of monetizing it and making money off of people buying Bitcoin. Well, now they think people should buy Bitcoin. So, you know, there, there, there's that that's going on. But to the extent that some of the people have actually changed their minds okay. and now think something that they used to think was worthless now has value. Yes. I mean, I don't doubt that some people have done that. And again, that is typical of any mania, any bubble. People are eventually going to throw in the towel and capitulate. Uh, after years and years of sitting on the sideline while everybody else is making fun of them. And and so to me, a lot of these big people getting involved could just as easily be the sign of a top as the sign of a whole new big leg of the bull market. Because what the Bitcoin bulls are saying is these big people getting involved means that even more big people are going to get involved in the future. Well, maybe not. Okay. Maybe this is it. Maybe these are all the big people that are coming in and there's nothing to follow them. Um, so... Uh, you know, I, it doesn't change my mind. And then, of course, you've got Elon Musk, who is the biggest. You know, on, in fact, he tweeted up uh, the price of Bitcoin earlier this morning, but it's since turned around. I mean, everybody is waiting for uh, an Elon Musk tweet as a yeah. buy signal. You know, there are a lot of people now. Somebody wrote an algorithm that they buy Bitcoin every time I tweet about it, even though I just tweet about it in a negative way. A lot of famous people are getting behind Scooter Coin now. What's what's stopping you from getting in there? You seem like a smart enough guy. I mean, what about you? Will you invest in Scooter Coin, Peter? Can I get that on record today? Okay, well, first of all, you take a guy like Anthony Scaramucci. In the beginning, he was uh, skeptical and wasn't a Bitcoin believer. But now he has a massive Bitcoin fund. And... He has basically staked his reputation and made, you know, really made a career ending, I think, bet if he's wrong on Bitcoin. I get email solicitations. I guess I'm on his mailing list. And that's the only investment product that they're trying to get me to get involved with is Bitcoin. So when you have a Bitcoin fund and you're a manager of that fund and you're getting you know, your fees, uh, yeah, you all of a sudden are completely one sided and biased. You got to go out there and talk Bitcoin. You got to say Bitcoin's great. Bitcoin's a new gold. Bitcoin's going to go up. So Anthony Scaramucci has a huge vested interest now in the success of Bitcoin. And so you, what, what do you expect him to say? Uh, but yeah, Bitcoin is great because he makes a lot of money if you buy Bitcoin and he's okay. managing that fund. And he needs everybody to buy Bitcoin because otherwise the price will crash and he'll lose money in his fund because Bitcoin is all based on the greater fool coming in and, 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 and buying more of it. Sure, but Scooter Coin, why not, why not get behind it? Your son pioneered it. I mean, the only cryptocurrencies that would make sense would be legitimate cryptocurrency. Just like I don't like fiat paper currency, which is paper currency that's not backed by real money. I don't like fiat digital currency. But if you have a digital currency that's backed by gold, and redeemable in gold, well, then that's fine. That's great. Right. That's that. I think that would work perfectly. The problem is governments don't like that. So if there are credible digital currencies backed by gold, everybody would prefer those currencies to the dollar, to the euro, to the yen. And so if that were to happen and you had a legitimate threat to the monopoly that central banks have, then the governments would act to shut it down. I think the reason they're not trying to shut down Bitcoin is because they don't perceive it to be an actual threat. And I agree. I think Bitcoin is only a threat to the people who are buying it and they're going to end up losing their money. Uh, but it's not a threat to governments and central banks. But a legitimate alternative 
to fiat paper currency, real digital currency, yeah. stable, that can act as a medium of exchange and a unit of account and a store of value, and that solves all of these problems, which is what a real cryptocurrency backed by gold would do, uh, that the government would probably not tolerate. Okay, right, okay. Well, let's leave it there. Thank you very much, Peter Schiff, and uh, good luck with your investing in old heavy metals that have been dug out the ground by children in Africa.